Welcome back to our captivating world of science and discovery. Today, we embark an extraordinary journey to the unseen wonders within our bodies. Get ready to be amazed as we dive into enchanting realm of human body's normal flora. Today, we will discuss the normal flora of human body. Listen to this lecture carefully and try to understand as we will be unveiling the marvels of human and normal flora. What is normal flora? Many microorganisms, primarily bacteria, inhabit the human body and are harmless in a healthy individual and may even be beneficial under normal circumstances. These microorganisms are termed normal flora. A healthy newborn enters the world is an essentially sterile condition, but after birth it rapidly acquires normal flora from food and environment including from other humans. The various bacteria and fungi are permanent residents of specific body sites, especially the skin, oropharynx, cologne, and vagina. The normal flora organisms are often referred to as commensals. Commensals are the organisms that benefit from another host but do not damage the host. Relation of microorganisms to human may be symbiosis, mutualism, commensalism. Symbiosis Organisms interact in a close and permanent association. For example, E. coli always found in the human intestine. Neither E. coli nor human intestine benefit from the each other. Mutualism It's beneficial to both the body and microorganism. For example, lactobacillus found in the vagina. Lactobacillus refer to the concept of mutualism, which is a type of symbiotic relationship between two organisms in which both derive benefits from the each other. Lactobacillus is a type of bacteria that naturally inhibits the vaginal environment in many women. This bacterium helps maintain the acidic pH of the vagina, creating an inhospitable environment for harmful pathogens. Commensalism It's a symbiosis in which only one population benefits from the association. For example, E. coli produce a certain amount of vitamin B and vitamin K. This slide highlights various factors that influence the composition of human flora, particularly in relation to bacteria. Human flora refers to the microorganisms including bacteria, fungi and viruses that inhabit our bodies primarily in the digestive system, oral cavity and vagina. Makeup of human flora is influenced by genetics, age, sex, stress, nutrition and diet of individuals. Bacterial flora is sufficiently constant among all individuals. Human development changes like weaning, eruption of the teeth and onset and cessation of ovarian function invariably affect the normal flora of intestinal tract, oral cavity and vagina respectively. Now we will discuss the classification of normal flora based on their residency in the human body. As we know that normal flora refers to the microorganisms that inhabit our bodies without causing disease under normal circumstances. According to residency, there are two types of normal flora, resident microbiota and transient microbiota. What are resident microbiota? Resident microbiota consist of relatively fixed types of the microorganisms that are regularly found in a specific area of the body at given age. They have established a stable and long-term presence in the respective habitats such as skin, mucous membranes or GIT tract. If the resident microbiota is disturbed or temporarily reduced, it has the ability to quickly re-establish itself and store microbial balance. Transient microbiota Transient microbiota consist of non-pathogenic or potentially pathogenic microorganisms that temporarily inhabit the skin or mucous membranes. These microorganisms are derived from the environment such as contact with the surfaces, objects or other individuals. Unlike resident microbiota, transient microbiota do not establish themselves permanently on the body surface. They can persist on the skin or mucous membrane for hours, days or weeks before being replaced or eliminated. Importantly, the transient microbiota do not typically cause disease or harm when they are in balance with the resident microbiota and body's immune system. Here we will discuss the roles of normal flora in maintaining health and potentially causing disease. 
the members of normal flora play a role in the maintenance of health and in causation of disease in the following ways they can cause disease especially in immunocompromised and debilitated individuals the normal flora which are typically harmless can cause disease in individuals with weakened immune systems or those who are already debilitated in such individuals the normal flora become opportunistic pathogens taking advantage of the compromised immune system to cause infections or diseases they create a protective host defense mechanisms the non pathogenic resident bacteria occupy attachment sites on the skin and mucosa that can interfere with colonization by pathogenic bacteria by occupying these attachment sites the resident bacteria create a physical barrier that interferes with the colonization and growth of pathogenic bacteria they may also serve a nutritional function the intestinal bacteria produce several vitamin b and vitamin k poorly nourished people treated with oral antibiotics can have vitamin deficiencies due to reduced normal flora these are the normal flora of skin staphylococcus epidermidis staphylococcus aureus micrococcus species non pathogenic nigeria species alpha hemolytic and non hemolytic streptococci and others as listed staphylococcus epidermidis and other coagulase negative staphylococci reside in the skin's outer layers and account for 90% of the skin aerobes and aerobic organisms such as propionobacterium reside in the deep skin layers hair follicles and sweat and sebaceous glands skin inhabitants are generally harmless although staph epidermidis can attach to and colonize plastic catheters and medical devices that penetrate the skin sometimes resulting in serious blood stream infections factors that may be important in eliminating non resident microorganisms from skin are low ph fatty acids in sebaceous secretions presence of lysozyme sweating and bathing cannot eliminate the flora some of disinfectants may reduce the flora but the flora is rapidly replenished from sebaceous and sweat glands normal microflora of the mouth and upper respiratory tract a broad spectrum of organisms colonize the nose throat and mouth but the lower bronchi and alveoli typically contain few microorganisms in nose there are a variety of streptococcal and staphylococcal species for example corini bacteria staphylococcus streptococci after 5 minutes after the birth in new noids the human microbiota is homogeneously distributed across the body the primary resident flora that appears 4 to 12 hours after birth is streptococcus viridans which remains forever at the beginning of life aerobic and anaerobic staphylococci gram negative diplococci that is nigeria and moraxella catharalis diphtheroids and lactobacilli are added as the normal flora normal flora of mouth and upper respiratory tract include actinomyces species that are found in adults on tonsils and gingiva yeast most commonly candida species on the mouth trachea and pharynx while alveoli are sterile means they do not contain any kind of bacteria or microorganism the teeth and surrounding gingival tissues are colonized by their own particular species such as streptococcus mutans some normal residents of nasopharynx can also cause disease for example strep pneumonia found in the nasopharynx of many healthy ind- individuals can cause acute bacterial pneumonia especially in aged and those persons whose resistance is impaired the pharynx is colonized usually by streptococcus pneumonia streptococcus pyogenes and gram negative cocci that include hemophilus influenza and neisseria meningitides if the respiratory tract epithelium becomes damaged as in case of bronchitis or viral pneumonia individual may become susceptible to infection by these pathogens descending from the nasopharynx so the usual normal flora of upper respiratory tract include non hemolytic streptococci alpha hemolytic streptococci neisseria species hemophilus influenza diphtheroids staphylococcus species 
प्रेवोटेला माइकोप्लाज्मास एंड नीमोकोकाए नॉर्मल फ्लोर ऑफ आई एंड कंजंग टाइवा द कंजंग टाइवा ऑफ आई इज यूजली कॉलोनाइज बाय स्टेफ्लोकोकाए एपिडर्मिडस स्टेफ्लोकोकस ऑरियस स्टेप्टोकोकस नमूनी डिफ्थिरोइड्स नॉन हीमोलिटिक स्टेप्टोकोकाए एंड नाइसीरिया स्पीशीज नाइसीरिया गनोरी and chlamydia trachomatis are specifically found in infection of conjunctiva tears contain an enzyme that is lysozyme that has antimicrobial properties that help limit the bacterial population or growth also the conjunctiva is kept moist by the production of secretions from lacrimal glands and when a person blink his eyes it mechanically washes off the foreign bodies and other bacteria normal flora of intestine at birth the intestine of human body is sterile but later on the microorganisms are introduced with food breastfeed uh, infants have lactobacilli and lactic acid streptococci in their normal flora while bottle feed infants have much mixed flora as compared to breastfeed infants and as the food habits develop toward the adult pattern the bowel flora also changes in normal adults the esophagus contains microorganisms arriving with saliva and food the stomach acidity keeps the number of microorganisms as minimum as 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 per grams of contents while the pylorus favors the pro pro proliferation of gram positive cocci and bacilli the acidic pH of stomach prevent the bacteria bacterial growth such as vibrio cholera so as the pH of intestinal contents become alkaline down towards the large and small intestine the resident pleural population also increases many microorganisms are introduced into the stomach from mouth that means saliva and many of them are killed due to the gastric acidic pH that is 2 to 3 they mainly include streptococcus staphylococcus lactobacillus and peptostreptococcus so the normal flora of colon or large intestine includes bacteroids especially bacteroid fragile fragilis bifidobacterium eubacterium coliforms enterococcus especially enterococcus faecalis lactobacillus clostridium especially clostridium perfringens So this is the distribution of major bacterial groups in the intestinal tract. First in oral uh, cavity the most common bacteria include Corynebacteria, Lactobacillus, Streptococcus and Staphylococcus. In stomach we have Helicobacter pylori, Lactobacillus, Peptostreptococcus and Streptococcus species. In large intestine most common are bacteroids and others as explained earlier. In smaller intestine same as lactobacillus and streptococcus normal flora of urethra the anterior urethra of both sexes contains small numbers of same types of organisms found on the skin and perineum the these organisms regularly appear in normal urine in 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 4 per ml numbers the urine in the kidney and bladder is sterile that means it doesn't contain any microorganism but later it becomes contaminated in lower urethra by the same organisms that inhabit outer layers of skin and perineum normal flora of vagina includes lactobacillus species that maintains the low ph of vagina and if the production of or population of lactobacillus bacteria is reduced in the vagina due to antibiotic therapy then the ph of vagina increases that causes the pathogens to overgrow including candida albicans that causes yeast infection and it is also a part of normal normal flora of vagina mouth and small intestine lactobacilli production also reduces after menopause and then a mixed flora returns the normal vaginal flora includes group b streptococcus as many is 25% of women of child bearing age during the birth process the baby can acquire this group b streptococcal infections that can cause neonatal meningitis and sepsis the cervical mucus also has antibacterial activity and contain enzyme lysozyme 
so here is the list of other normal flora of vagina that include anaerobic streptococci pepto streptococci prevotella species clostridia gardenella vaginalis urealoplasma urea lyticum sometimes listeria or mobilinca species normal flora of ear as ear is an extension of skin so normal flora of skin basically inhabit or colonize the ear also that includes staphylococcus epidermidis diphtheroids alpha hemolytic and non hemolytic streptococci and less frequently bacillus and neisseria species so here is the summary of major members of normal flora according to their anatomic locations so this is also another list of normal flora according to their location and major microorganism at this location and the, then less important microorganisms thank you and stay tuned for more informative videos like this